Hello and welcome to my workshop. Um, I was doing some routing yesterday and this old McAllister router, plunge router, that I've had for must be 20 years. Um, I released the lever on the back to allow it to spring back up and it sprung too hard and came apart and unfortunately all sorts of little bits of plastic have come off and come out and snapped and I think it's basically after 20 years it's um, it's done its time and it's beyond economical repair so I've decided to bin that off. Um, so I decided that maybe it was time to get myself a, um, a little uh, palm router, router sorry, palm router um, because I've, I've seen lots of videos uh, all about them and um, it you know looks looks like um, a good tool, nice and easy. I did find that that plunge router was a bit cumbersome at times, especially the base was so big that it was actually difficult to get onto small items. Um, I found on Facebook Marketplace that somebody was advertising a um, old JCB um, plunge router uh, router. Sorry, I don't know why I keep saying router plunge router. Um, 25 quid, uh, 30 quid, uh, fully working order. Um, so I, I, I got picked that up anyway, um, just because sometimes it is useful to have a, a, a big, beefy router like this. Um, but as I say, the, 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 the bases are quite big, and I find it is quite restrictive if I want to do a, if I want to do routing on a small item. Um, like for instance, these little phone holder. Um, things that I'm doing, I, I just want to route a little um, ridge in there for the phone to actually rest in and um, it's just quite difficult to actually um, get a big router in there. So I've got this and uh, I probably will do a review on this, I don't, I don't know that you can even buy it anymore, um, I, I didn't find any online, um, but I probably won't use it that much now that I've got the, the Palm router, but useful to have in my arsenal anyway. So. Here we have a Makita RT0702CX4. Um, it's a, I say, it, it's actually not technically not a Palm uh, router. I was looking at a Palm one, I was looking at the uh, Bauer one. Uh, I didn't want, first of all, I didn't want battery operated. Uh, I'm in the workshop, I only use it in the workshop. I've got power here. And I just I've had frustration with um, constantly recharging batteries and finding that I'm using them and they're, they're running out too quickly. So I wanted a corded one. I wanted a small one. Um, and so I was going to go for the Urbauer, and right till the last minute that was the one I was going to go for. Um, and that is a true Palm router router. Um, but in the end, I went for this one because this one has got, it's, it's twice as heavy, so it's quite a bit heavier, um, but it's got all sorts of um, guides, you know, edge guides and stuff like that, which the Obawa didn't have. The Obawa is just literally just a palm router, and you know, you're almost doing it freestyle. You can, you can put a piece of wood um, clamped to your piece that you can run along, and that's what I was gonna do, but anyway, I've gone for this. Um, same powered engine, 710 watts as the Obawa, and um, as I say, really, the, the main differences are um, they're both variable speed, um, but the main difference was this one's twice as heavy, which was a negative for me. But it's it's um, and it's got dust extraction, but I, I don't bother with dust extraction on most things, so I won't be using that. But it does have these two handy guides. It has an edge guide, and it also has a guide that goes underneath um, in in some way. So I'm going to investigate that. So let's unbox it then. So, as I say, this isn't technically a palm router. Technically, it's a trim router, um, but it's a palm sized. You can, it's big enough that you can actually buy um, a plunge accessory, like a case effectively that goes around it, that turns it into a, plan, a plunge router. Um, so it is, it is definitely quite meaty. Um, but now that I've got the, the big JCB, I, I, I'm, you know, I won't bother getting the um, that accessory. Okay, so in the box, you've got your instructions. You've got oh, that's not too heavy actually. Yeah, that's. I mean, I can see that that is. Yeah, I think it's 2.7 kilograms, and I think the about was 
1.7 or something. So that's not too bad. I mean, it's it is quite heavy. I suppose it's, it is quite heavy. Um, but the main thing is the size. You see, is I just want to be able to just get right into 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 sort of little gaps and stuff. And so that I think is going to be absolutely ideal. Got some dust extraction there, which as I say, I'm I'm almost certainly not going to use the dust extraction. Um, I um, just also to say I, I, I bought this with my own money. I'm not in any way sponsored. Uh, I paid um, Screwfix had a special offer on. It was supposed to be 143 pounds, and I paid 117 pounds. The barrel was going to be 70 pounds. So that's another thing that persuaded me was if this had been the full 140 pounds, I had twice as much as the barrel. Then I would have had a really difficult decision. But given that this was reduced to 112, um, that made it much easier. So I've got the little edge guide there, so that's that's going to be handy. Um, what we've got in here. I think, this is, I think they call this a laminate guide or something. And it seems to hang down underneath, and um, but it looks looked pretty handy when I when I looked at it. Um, so I'll see where I would use that as opposed to the edge uh, the edge guide, and then we've got the. Um, spanners okay so other than the dust extraction which i will keep i'll keep the attachment uh, and the other thing is this doesn't come with a case uh, the about even though the about was 70 quid um it did come with a case so that was another reason why i was going to go for the about um because i do like to have stuff in cases it makes it much easier to organize stuff but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this in my old McAllister um case for the one that I broke the other day. So I will have it, it will be in a case, it'll, it'll be far too big for it, but it'll be in a case so I can I can stack things on top of other things on the shelves. Um, okay, so. Spanners out. So I believe that you have two spanners I believe it's so that you they do provide a spindle, excuse me sorry they do provide a spindle lock um, for when you're taking the um, when you're taking the um, the router bit in and out but I believe you can also do it by if you don't like doing that you can also do it by effectively just using the two spanners in opposite directions I think that I think is I think it goes on the bottom and I think it's for um yeah I'll have to I'll have to read in the manual what that's for but I think it's for kind of going around small guiding around sort of shapes and stuff I think so I'll have to look at that um so yeah this edge this edge one is pretty pretty simple um but very efficient which is it just goes on uh on there in there and then you basically can you move move the edge setting in and out so that's that's pretty good um yeah it's, it is just reasonably heavy but um i had somebody put a review on and complained about the um the adjustment process not being very nice um wow, stiff um yeah i think i can live with that but one of the reasons i uh, as well as the plunge uh router being unwieldy and having far too big a base. I also found that I don't, I'm not really massively keen on the plunging process. Um, I think maybe a, maybe the spring is too um, the spring is too stiff or something I'm not sure but in the end what I always end up doing is pushing it down to its maximum setting, turning the lever so it's locked and then doing my route and then turning it on its side and putting it down on the work surface so I actually almost never I never release the thing. I never released the spring until I did it and then it broke. Um, and so actually this this suits me quite nicely because this you you put your you put your bit in, adjust it to the to the depth that you want, and do your routing and then put it down on the on your workbench. I'd be interested to see if it's a um, quick stop. Um, that'd be quite interesting to see. So let's give this a quick run then, shall we? Um, Cable. Right. So 
I'm going to put, what sort of bit am I going to put in here? So I'm just going to put a quarter, uh, quarter inch bit in there for just running along and putting a little, um, putting a little groove in there for the phone to sit in. So I have seen a few reviews. So it's unplugged. Make sure it's unplugged. And that's your little, that's your lock there. Um, so when you press that, then the spindle, the spindle no longer turns. So put a little quarter inch in there. Okay, so it's nice and simple. And then put that back on so that the pulley wheel there runs up and down this uh, guide. Okay, so I'm gonna have it so it's just proud. Okay, so there is a depth gauge along here, down the side, uh, it's a little depth gauge, so that's zero, zero mil of, of taking out, and then that's five mil there, so just give it a go on five mil. Hopefully, still unplugged, hopefully I should just be able to, oh, let's, let's have a go at doing this. This guide as well. So it's still unplugged. Wouldn't be putting my my hands anywhere near this blade if it was plugged in. Okay. Tighten that up. How far I want to be in. Okay, that should do nicely. So I should just be able to run that along the front. So I don't know how noisy it is, but I always wear ear and eye protection. So let's stick that on. Okay, it's now plugged in. So take care. We've got a um, green light on the top to tell us that there's power to it. We've got a speed adjustment here, which goes up to six. So I'll try it on four. Okay. Ready to go. Um, the last bit of that, the last three quarters of that is nice. Uh, just started off, obviously, that's one of the problems with the, that straight edge is it's great when it's on a straight edge, but at the beginning I was obviously slightly kinked, so that's just practice, I just need to get the hang of that. Um, so, um, it's, the only thing is now I can't put it down like that because the, the bit is protruding, so I'm just going to... Yeah, so there's no green light on now, I haven't got power. Uh, that, that felt pretty good uh, as a first use. Um, it was nice, smooth. Uh, I'll try it without the ear defenders on, but it sounded pretty sounded pretty quiet. Um, certainly compared to the big, great big plunge router. Um, so, and uh, yeah, I'll do some more test cuts with it. And um, hopefully, it looks like it's gonna do me very nicely. I certainly like the fact that it's so, such a small base. Um, I couldn't run the plunge router along there because this would be in the way and I was trying to get it further and further out but then it becomes less and less stable because it's less clamped. Um, this 
this has got loads of clearance there, I could actually have it further in, clamped even harder, and with more of the surface being uh, clamped. So, very pleased with that as a first first use. Um, I will um, I'll be using it quite a lot over the next uh, few weeks. I've got lots of little uh, little routers, routing bits that I need to do. So um, I'll be using it quite a bit over the next few weeks. So I will maybe do a follow up video, and then obviously I will do a long term review once I've had it for somewhere between four to six months, um, just to let you know how I got on with it, whether there's any good, bad, indifferent. Um, but no, very pleased with that. Um, and um, if you've got any questions, then stick them in the comments down below. Um, if you've got time to like the video, that would obviously be really helpful for me. Um, and if you've got time to subscribe to the channel, that is also really helpful because it gets my numbers up and um, makes these videos more worth worth my while. Um, so, yeah, thank you for thank you for watching and stay safe.